If you're choosing an intake for a canned 6.2 liter LS3, it's hard to beat the factory long runner intake, or maybe a fast. But what about for a big inch stroker? In this video, we're gonna compare two intakes, a long runner fast intake compared to a short runner mast single plane intake on three different engine combinations. First one, 6.2 liter cammed LS3 crate motor. Next combination, slightly wilder, 415 inch LS3 stroker. And the final combination, a much wilder, much bigger, 468 inch high compression, big cammed LS3 stroker. The question is, how do these two intakes compare on all three? To illustrate the effect of displacement on the intake manifold comparison, we ran the same two intake manifolds, a fast LSXR designed for the LS3 application and the mast single plane intake. And I was lucky enough to run that on three different combinations, three different displacements and three different power outputs. Starting with when I ran the big LS3 EFI intake test, we ran it on a 6.2 liter, basically an LS3 crate motor with a camshaft in it. Now the cam that we ran in it was a comp 469 cam and it was a 54-469-11. Uh, it's a 614, 624 lift split, 231, 247 degree duration split at 113 degree load separation angle. We also ran this thing, basically it had headers, camshaft, valve springs, and we had a Holly HP management system that we used to tune this. And we ran it first with the factory LS3 intake and then again with a number of different intakes. So if you guys haven't seen that test, check it out, it's right here. You'll be able to see all the different LS3 intakes and how they all perform compared to the factory intake. And as we saw, if you guys haven't seen that yet, the factory LS3 intake actually is very hard to beat. But here's what happened when we compared the fast intake, which by the way, is makes almost the same power as a factory LS3 intake. We ran the fast intake on our cam the crate motor produced 585 horsepower and 533 foot pounds of torque here's what happened when we installed the mast single plane intake with a 4150 acufab throttle body we still ran it fuel injected although you could also obviously run this carbureted combination Here's what happened when we ran the single plane intake. And as we've seen on almost every test, when we run a short runner single plane intake or a short runner EFI intake, they always do the same thing. They lose power down low because of runner length and then they'll pick up power at the top. The difference at 7,000 was quite a bit. It was 566 compared to 608. But the single plane intake, the short runner intake, only made more power from, oh, 6350 on out and everywhere below that it made less power than the long runner stuff so you have to decide which combination do i want am i more interested in the low speed power or and i say low speed all the way up to almost 6500 rpm or just the big top end you know the peak power number but now let's take a look and see what happened we've run this on a 6.2 liter basically a cam ls3 crate motor now let's find out when we run it on something much larger and find out if the much larger displacement still likes the long runner intake or if it likes the single plane even better because of the added displacement. Next comparison of the fast LS3 style intake manifold compared to the mass single plane intake came on a much larger displacement. This was a 468 inch stroker motor with high compression. This was basically an LS6 block that we had sleeved. The guys from Darton sleeved this thing so we could increase both the bore and the stroke on this combination. It was a 4185 bore, obviously that's why we had to sleeve the block, and a 4250 stroke. So the sleeves supplied by the Darton guys were both thicker so we could go out in bore size, and they were longer, which added stability down at the bottom of the stroke when we had these longer stroke lengths. So uh, 4.25 inch stroke, quite a bit of gain. And this was a big displacement, 468 inches. It also had a much bigger camshaft. that had a 255, 271 at 50, 624 lift, and 112 degree load separation angle. This particular combination had mast LS3 heads on it, the big bore LS3 heads. It had a Mylodon oil pan, inch and seven eighths headers um, controlled by a Holly HP management system. So this combination was working really well. We had a 102 millimeter throttle body on the fast intake manifold. Again, as I said, We'd also run this with a factory LS3 intake, and the factory LS3 intake produced almost identical power to the fast intake. 
but run with the fast manifold on this 468 inch stroker. This combination produced 732 horsepower and torque was up to 665 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we installed the mass single plane intake. And this was actually run with a carburetor and not fuel injection, although the fuel injection was used to control the, the timing on this. But equipped with the single plane intake, this combination produced 761 horsepower. The peak torque dropped down to 645 foot-pounds. And as you can see, like we saw with the smaller 6.2 liter, the long runner fast intake made more power than the short runner single plane intake. Although now, on the bigger displacement motor, the crossover was shifted down uh, a little bit. Now the crossover was at 5,900 RPM. If you remember on our 6.2 liter, it was at 6,350. So we had shifted it 400 RPM or so just from the increase in displacement. So we went from a 376 inch motor to this 468 inch motor you know, <laughs> 90, 90 cubic inches is quite a bit. And obviously it was a wilder combination. It had more displacement, it had more compression, it had more cam timing, but we see a similar trend. Longer runners want to make more power. They're optimized to make more power in this given RPM range. And then the single plane is much better, obviously at the top and anywhere past 6,000 RPM, the single plane intake would obviously definitely be the choice. It makes more power. So if you wanted to rev this thing out, Again, but you still have to choose. Where do I want my power production? What am I most concerned with? If I'm running this thing to 8,000, which it's not going to make good power at 8,000 because we're all, that would be quite a bit past the power peak. But again, you have to decide. Now that we've taken a look at the smallest displacement and the largest displacement and a comparison between these two intakes and where the crossover point is, let's take a look at something that's in the middle on a 416 inch stroker and find out where the crossover is there. Having compared the 468 inch combination and our standard 376 LS3 combination, having compared the intakes on both of those, it was time to look kind of in the middle and see if this thing followed suit. This was a test I ran to compare all the carbureted intake manifolds available for the LS3. If you haven't taken a look at that video, check it out. It's right here. I ran all of the carbureted combinations and compared them to the factory LS3 intake. And this was on a 416 inch stroker. So between the other two in terms of both displacement and power output. So let's take a look at our description here. It was a 415 inch motor. Obviously when we were testing all the LS3 stuff, it had Wiseco and K1 Ford's internals in it. It had AFR uh, LS3 heads on it. It had a good size camshaft in it from BTR. It was a stage four 623-596 lift split, 247, 258 degree duration split at 113 degree lobe separation angle. Engine seven eighths headers, a Holly oil pan, and obviously we were controlling this with a fast XFI. The intake manifold, this was actually an LS3 intake manifold with a 92 millimeter fast throttle body, not the fast intake. Although, as I've said, and if you guys have been watching this channel at all and following any of the stuff I've done with all the thousands of magazine stories, <laughs> the LS3 fast and the factory LS3 intake manifold make almost identical power. Now, the fast cathedral port intake has big power gains over the factory, all of the factory truck and LS6 and all those manifolds. But on the LS3, there just wasn't a lot of extra power to be had. Um, I really would like to get my hands on a ported version of the LS3 to compare that because the fast intake just does, does not gain power on the LS3 applications like it does on the cathedral stuff. So this was a factory LS3 intake manifold run on this 416 stroker equipped with a stock intake at produced 627 horsepower and 568 foot-pounds torque. So here's what happened when we put the same short runner single plane mass intake manifold on this. And this was run with a carbureted application. Obviously the, the single plane or the factory LS3 intake was run with EFI, but this is run with a 950 Ultra XP carburetor. So run with the single plane mass intake, it made more peak power as we have come to expect, 649 horsepower. Peak torque dropped again as we have come to expect. 
down to 555 foot-pounds. And as we've seen, the long runner, in this case factory intake, produced more power than the single plane up to about 5,900 RPM. So a very similar crossover point to what we saw with the larger 468 inch motor and a little bit lower than we saw from 6350 down to 5950, let's say, lower than we saw on the smaller displacement motor. So I'll go ahead and in the next uh, segment, I'll go ahead and put them all up so you can see the crossover points for all of them. And luckily they make such different power because they're different displacements. I'll only include the horsepower curves so you can kind of compare the three, but this is a common theme. <laughs> the longer rudder intake, even on a really big motor, on a medium-sized motor, and on a small motor, makes more power than the short runner stuff through most of the RPM range. Only at the very top does the short runner stuff actually make more power. So let's take a look at the comparison and then on to our conclusion. These three sets of comparisons represent the three different test motors that we ran the long runner versus short runner test on. And down here at the lowest point, we can see the crossover for our 6.2 liter cammed LS3 motor. The crossover point was at 6,350 RPM. When we went to our 416 inch motor, 415 inch stroker motor, the crossover point for the single plane and the long runner fast style intake manifold dropped down to 5,950. And then on the 468 inch motor, it dropped down to about 5,900. So we didn't see a big change from the 416 to the 468. And I actually ran the same combination on a much, or the same type of comparison on a much bigger 495 inch motor. And we saw a similar thing. The long runner intake will make more power at the lower RPM range. In this case, something below 6,000 RPM on these bigger motors. On a smaller motor, that crossover point will be extended out a little bit farther, but we see for most of the RPM range, the long, long runner combination makes more power. So then you guys get to decide <laughs> which one do I want, which one is more important, but just know that even on really big combinations, 468 inch motor and on the 495 that I tested, for most of the RPM range, this longer runner stuff definitely makes more power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about our intake shootout, the long runner versus the short runner on our three different engine combinations? And the reason that I did this video is because I always get the following comment. Yeah, but if you tested that combination on a much wilder, bigger displacement, the single plane would come into its own and make as much power as that long runner intake. And that's fundamentally not true. As we've seen on all three of these combinations, and I actually ran the same test on a larger, 495 inch motor and we saw the same thing intake manifolds are designed to be effective in a given rpm range and even though we shifted that by about 400 rpm in our test going from the 6.2 liter to the 468 inch stroker the rest of the curve everything down below that the long runner intake made more power and that's what they will always do the short runner single plane intake will never make as much low speed and mid-range power as the long runner intake that doesn't solve the big problem. The big problem here is you guys still have to choose. Which one do you pick? Even on a 468 inch motor, do you choose the big top end charge of the short runner single plane intake? Or do you pick the fast or stock LS3 style long runner intake that offers more average power production up to about 6,000 RPM? That's a question only you guys can answer. Armature Holder guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Let me know what you think about these kinds of intake comparisons. It's always interesting. Keep watching.